Welcome back to how to work with an RD. Now, first of all, going down to the floor, you want to really avoid going straight back because as you see, going straight back, I'm using my abdominal flexor, which is my rectus abdominis, which is the muscle that's actually splinting. Yeah. And assuming there's no full control of that, you want to make sure when you're going down, you're using the side, here we go, to avoid that unnecessary pressure on your back. Once you're on your back, we're going to just find our neutral position or our new core, taking a few pelvic tilts and just get a sense so like what's my range here? Like which side comes easy? Is it the tuck position? Or is it the tilt position? Or is there potentially even any pain in the one or the other direction? So once you let that pendular come into a neutral position, which is basically where you have your natural curve, but there is support of the deep stabilizing muscles, the transverse abdominis, we're gonna work on some more activation of that. So first step, I'm gonna activate my front upper pelvic bones towards one another on the exhale. Okay, inhale. Guide your breath more into the kidney area and on the exhale, hug your waist together. Engage that waist. Feel the lengthening of your spine without flattening it. Let's do another breath. So there's no blocking of the breath. Very important, yeah. It's just a redirecting of a deep breath into the kidney area so that the front can remain active. Now activating my waistline into the middle. Yeah, I'm going to do that to the best of my ability. And then I'm going to tilt first step, just my knee to the right on the exhale. I keep squeezing my waist, inhale center with the attention, with the intention of not getting a pelvic pos positioning or a pelvic motion really. Inhale, breath center, and I'm going left, having it neutral without to tilt. Good. Inhale, center. At the same time as I'm hugging my belly inward and up, I also make sure I lift my pelvic floor because the one thing we don't want to happen is additional pelvic floor pressure. This happens if you engage, you see, but now I'm flattening my spine, and put the pressure down without actually experiencing that lift and lengthening through your spine. So it should feel pretty light, but also demanding. So a lot of focus going into this area. And sometimes the brain doesn't have the easiest time of making that, you know, sensory muscular recruitment here. God, once you do this on 10, come back to neutral position. Yeah, hopefully your spine already felt a little longer. And now again, goal is to maintain my optimal neutral. Yeah, for me, there's a little bit less. Yeah, bring the rib cage in as well. Okay, without flattening the spine. And then inhale as the exhale, I hug, squeeze my legs, hug my waistline, and I lift my right leg. So again, on the second exercise, exhale, left side. Again, the goal is to segmentally stabilize each section of my lumbar spine. I'll show you how it looks. If you are not stabilizing it, it's gonna look like this. See how lifting the leg pulls me forward because the action comes from the hip flexor without the recruitment of its antagonist, the transverse and the glutes. All right, let's keep going. Okay, you can exhale through the nose, but also it's okay to prolong your exhale with a little bit of lip break. Gotta focus a little bit on my ribcage here without flattening. And sometimes those twos are closed. So when you just 
starting with this after having a baby, you may overdo it a little bit and that's okay. Yeah, because the recruitment is really demanding. Okay, again, go focus, stabilize your pelvis. So every time, inhale, breath, exhale, recruit, empty the breath without having the pelvis move and try to visualize each single segment here of your sacrum positioning that's stable, of each vertebra that is stable every time I lift the leg and really it's a full body engagement. Yes, I do focus on the deep core line engaging pelvic floor and transverse, but it's also my whole body is engaged. Yeah, there's a really a weakness and length through my entire spine, through my entire body. My toes are awake. Again, one more demo, how it feels when you're not stabilizing. You notice my body being pulled in a direction asymmetrically. So you wanna keep that symmetric pressure underneath you. And the floor is a wonderful feedback for that. Wonderful, that's number two. So once you understand how to engage the transverse before having any additional work, we can go into more advanced exercise. So moving from the floor up, let's start on our four, which is a nice, you know, advancement of supine position. And on your back, I want you to take your legs together for now and press the back of your feet down. As you inhale, you open your thoracic, but maintain control of that transverse. So it's lengthening without dropping the belly. Okay, hug that in. And then really draw your pubic bone towards the floor, lengthening the sacrum. Let's do that again. Find a nice smooth breath. And just notice how easy is it to lose it. And I show you when I lose it, there's a collapse here, right? So you keep that engagement, but you continue doing exhale, cat cow. So with the next breath, after a few movements, we're gonna increase the flexion, engaging the front body some more by pressing the tops of the feet, or if that's impossible, tuck the toes, tops of the feet into the earth, pulling the belly button to the spine and looking towards it at the same time, okay? On the inhale breath, lower down, lengthen. And then again, exhale, feel the recruitment, the tops of the feet, quadriceps, pelvic tuck, lengthening of the back line as the front line engages. It's a really nice way to engage. So yes, I do have some rectus here at work, but it's really after here, pelvic floor, after transverse and then so the order is very crucial. What we want to avoid in rectus diastasis is that I start using this muscle before previously engaging the lower levels, the deeper levels of the transverse abdominis. So it's always transverse first and then engage. Transverse first, you know, and then at the side. So it needs to recruit in order. Once you advance your exercises with the optimal recruitment, karma of pelvic floor transverse, then whatever else you're working on, side muscles or the straight ones, then you can advance all your poses and all your exercises. I hope this helps. Comment in the section below if you need some further info and have a good recovery into your new center, into your new core, into your new strength after an RD. Thank you very much.